with me now. Hello everybody, it's Nick again and welcome back to the Reptilinks video blog. This is our second uh, segment where I'm going to cover unboxing. So uh, basically we've had a lot of questions about uh, how do we store the product, you know, what do we do after we get it and that's all the type of stuff I'm going to cover in this segment. So uh, basically we're just going to jump right into it. Um, here we go. It is Christmas time. You have your Reptilinks box. It shows up. First thing you'll notice is that it's packaged with a lot of care. Um, very, very uh, adamant about how our boxes go out and they, if they don't show up to you looking perfect, they darn, darn well are perfect when they leave our facility. Um, so when it does show up, the first thing that you're going to need is uh, a good straight edge. Don't like try to use a butter knife or something like that. That's not going to get you too far. You might end up jabbing it into your hand or something like that. Um, use a razor blade or some kind of sharp knife to open up your box. Um, and you'll find that our boxes are taped in such a way, it's an eye tape method, but then the corners are also taped as well on the top and bottom. What that does is it actually seals the corners to hold in the gas, um, the CO2 from the dry ice, um, which allows us to keep our product frozen longer, make sure it gets to you intact. Um, also, these boxes are slammed around, they're picked up, they're thrown down, uh, they're thrown off of belts, you name it. So we want these things to stay intact uh, until they get to you. Uh, so basically what you want to do is get a nice sharp knife. Uh, you want to start in the corner here and these things are taped good so be careful to slide your, your uh, straight edge in there and come all the way across like so. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Start in the corner here. Watch your fingers. It's going to be a little tough to find that groove because these things are taped uh, so, you know, taped so well. And then you're going to slide this across. And then just start your edge there and come down. Kind of hard to do with a blunt butter knife or an unsuitable, unsuitable tool. So make sure you have something sharp. Um, you're going to want to open up your box like so. Now at this point, you have dry ice in here, okay? Dry ice kicks off. Uh, CO2, it's toxic, it can actually kill you in a confined area. Um, it's cool stuff, but it also can be dangerous. Please, when you take this paper off, do not go in there without gloves on and pick up big chunks of dry ice. You could have a little chunk of dry ice like this in your box, or you could have 30 pounds. Okay, that's enough to where if you try to pick that up with your bare hands, you could rob a bank afterwards or something because you're not going to have any fingerprints left after that, okay? So just use common sense. Uh, use a nice insulated pair of gloves. I don't have dry ice here now. We only get it when we ship, but there's an ice pack in here. Um, just keep in mind I would have gloves on when I pick this up. You're going to want to take your dry ice and put it somewhere where it's vented. Take it outside, do whatever. If you're going to play around with it inside, make sure that the windows are open. Uh, be careful, be mindful of small children around it, and, you know, by all means have fun with it, but, you know, don't do anything stupid with it, because that comes back on us. Uh, you know, you, you can, if you can find this stuff, uh, you can get it to explode and everything. I don't want to hear about it if you do stuff like that. By all means, knock yourself out, but we, we do not want to hear about it. Once you get your dry ice out, there'll be a, another layer of paper, which I just took out and all your links should be nicely packed uh, in, the, in the box. Um, these are a bunch of links. I just, we have feed freezers here where anything less than perfect goes into the feed freezers and that's what my animals eat. Um, so that's what I have in here and we're gonna do a bunch of rounds of feeding after this and I'm also gonna do feeding uh, demonstrations in the next segment as well. Okay, so um, basically the product stays frozen. All right, so you're gonna take it straight from your box and you're gonna put it right into your freezer. Um, when it stays in the original vacuum sealed package, these links could be good for three months to two years, depending on how well the bag is sealed, 
Um, and it's just really amazing how long this stuff can last, how we package it. Um, a lot of people have many different techniques of how they prep their uh, reptilinks to feed. And so I'll just cover the basics of, of uh, what should be done. Um, essentially, you've unpackaged your box, you go to the freezer, you have all your links ready to go. You have any number of options. A lot of people will take the bag and they'll put it straight into the refrigerator and let it thaw for 24 hours, a day or two, whatever it takes. Then they will cut it open, okay? and uh, go and, and warm their links for a short period after that and feed their animals. That's great if that works for you. Um, there is one problem with that though. If you thaw this, okay, before cracking the seal on these bags, they're vacuum sealed under pressure. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna squeeze um, some more of the blood and, and uh, moisture out of the links. So they're, they're not gonna be uh, as as clean to work with okay um, by all means though, I mean when people are feeding a lot of animals that's the easiest thing to do and it's not gonna really hurt anything that is with the traditional cased links that's 8 to 12 gram link size all the way up to a hundred you can thaw them out under vacuum seal pressure now if you do that with the minis or micros you're gonna be in big trouble because what's gonna happen is those are gonna thaw and it's gonna squish them down, and it's gonna squeeze all the blood and everything out of them. So in that case, what you wanna do with the micros and minis is you wanna cut your bag open when they're frozen, okay? When they're frozen, and then you're gonna remove just one or two links, okay? And then, and then thaw these out. Now you can put them under a light or anything else that you want to do, um, but be careful because they do thaw very quickly and there's any number of different things that people do. They thaw them at room temperature, some people put them in water, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, it, it deteriorates the calcium coating on them. Uh, what I do is I warm them up in my hand real quick and that's usually how I feed the micro and mini links. Um, what do we do with a bag of links that's open now? We can't re-vacuum seal them unless a lot of you have caught on to the fact that it, it's great to have a vacuum sealer on hand. But for those of you that don't, what do you do with these? Well, the best thing to do is you can, you can keep them in the original uh, bag, but we did start with a resealable bags, okay? Because I'm all about having this product be uh, you know, very convenient and everything. Well, we found out that resealable bags are faulty. Um, rarely do companies have their plastic welding machines set to where the bag is sealed 100%. So what we were finding is when we use resealable bags is that there's a very slow leak in them, which you can see these links, these were in the feed freezer for a reason. Uh, they developed ice crystals. That's gonna happen nine times out of 10 um, you know, with resealable bags, uh, which we just cannot have. So these are the best bags. There's least margin for error to get the product to you sealed properly and looking exactly how it needs to look. You can fold this up and squeeze this out, but there is gonna be um, some moisture in there. So what I recommend doing is grabbing, you can grab a sandwich bag or uh, a Ziploc bag like this, and you would take your remaining links Put them in your bag and then you want to try to squeeze all the air out get as much air out as possible and seal that thing up okay then that's great that works that's going to keep your links um, frozen and looking pretty good for some time if you take them and place them in a tupperware container then they're going to keep a lot longer and they're not going to develop ice crystals because you're just you're not allowing any air to seep through that bag and get to them make sure this is completely sealed off. That is what I would recommend to you guys on how to keep your links until you're actually feeding them.
Okay, another big question that we get is, well, how long can I keep these uh, in the freezer? I touched upon it briefly. If they're in the original seal, up to two years. I feed links that are in feed freezers two years later. They smell as fresh as they can be uh, the day we made them. Even the fruits and veggie ones is pretty amazing. Um, to be more on the, you know, err on the side of caution, I would say feed your product within the first year, uh, especially for fruits and veggie um, blends. But, you know, you're going to find that you could go e even longer than that. Um, and if you do this, if you get the air out of your bag and seal them up in a Tupperware, they can easily keep for six months to a year. This is something that you have to keep an eye on. Um, say I want to keep these in the refrigerator, or when you guys are feeding and transitioning animals, you may not have snakes or uh, you know lizards take links right away. Um, and so at that point, you have the option to refreeze the product or put it in the refrigerator and say try it the next day or something. If you do put it back in the refrigerator, I would feed within three days. Um, the way that you can tell if your product has gone bad is just smell it. It will smell like vinegar or like a sour smell to it. And that's usually after the third day in the freezer, especially five, uh, you know, if you go five to seven days, you're gonna start to smell your links um, turn a little bit. Um, so that would be my advice to you on that. Um, how long you can keep this stuff in the refrigerator after you thaw it depends on what temperature you thaw the product on in the first place. So um, if you thaw your links at room temperature right out of the freezer, then you're shortening the life of the reptilinks for future feedings. So you're definitely looking at no more than about three days in the refrigerator. Now if you thaw uh, the links in the refrigerator anywhere from 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below, so you get a, a, a slow defrost, then you're going to be able to refreeze them two or three times or keep them in the refrigerator longer. So that's something to keep in mind as well. I hope this helps, guys. Uh, please, you know, comment with any other questions that you have regarding unboxing or feeding, and we'll be happy to help you out. We appreciate it. We'll see you for the next segment.